Now that I have handled students uh, for the past 24 years when I was still a faculty member of the UP Los Banos, I can see how much satisfaction one would get if one meets former students who would greet you, thank you for your mentoring, and those, especially those who have succeeded in their careers. It's a sense of fulfillment and satisfaction that it is immeasurable. You cannot uh, match that with any amount. And that is what we call in, uh, in the academe a psychic income. When you see students uh, succeed and when you see uh, them, you know, follow the values that you have uh, taught them, that you have shown by example, uh, it is really a sense of satisfaction that is very difficult to, to describe. I'm proud to say that uh, it was during my stint in the cabinet that the Philippines got its first connection to internet. That was March 29, 1994 in Cebu. And uh, we were connected to the world through a very limited <coughs> uh, bandwidth with, through Australia. But nevertheless, it got us initiated and after that, uh, several other internet service providers got into the picture and now uh, we are, I think, uh, very well uh, situated in terms of internet services uh, in many, if not most, places of the Philippines. So I would say that my stint in the cabinet was a uh, quite productive one, thanks to the support of both President Ramos and President Estrada. And uh, hopefully these uh, accomplishments, if you may call them that, would, would uh, be sustained uh, as, as I did build on the shoulders of uh, the giants that came before me. such a very collective, quote-unquote, organism that if you want to introduce any change or you want to move forward, you'll have to get the buy-in of several sectors. So I think the first, uh, the first thing that I would cite as, as a step forward would be improving our host country relationship. <music>
second thing I think that I would consider as a step forward would be uh, putting on very solid grounds the regulatory system at ERI. By regulatory, I mean uh, the operations or the activities at ERI that that allows us to comply or that will require us to comply with uh, guidelines or international guidelines or national uh, requirements, especially with regards to quarantine. What else I should say may be a start of the rationalization of the country's offices' roles and functions. That was at the early part of my term. Uh, the um, country offices were reporting directly to me through the Inter International Programs Management uh, Office. Um, and lastly, of course, I would consider probably the most difficult and challenging part was uh, having been able to finally get the headquarters agreement of ERI in place. say uh, the, the only other interesting part would be managing the board activities. Uh, they are very busy and important people and we make sure that uh, information is given to them ahead of time because they have to make important decisions in a very short period of meeting time. And and we had hoped that they would be able to, to read the materials. Of course, they receive voluminous materials, but we, we try to send it to them two weeks in advance. But it's been quite an interesting experience for me to deal with, with the board. It's been a very complex set of, of people that have different points of views, and it is to the credit of the chair and to the DG that these views are processed and at the end of the day, we reach some kind of an agreement. Uh, the debates are very interesting, um, but I think at, at the end of the day, it is always Iris' interest that uh, prevails over, men, ob, over, the, over their discussions. <music> Thank you.
our understanding of how to make our partners tick and how they will buy into the programs and how effectively they will use Iris inputs to fit what their national needs would be, I think, the greatest, the greatest challenge for us. I, I think we, we should continue to regard the value, the very high value that we put with our partners, uh, the national networks, the networks that we're now building with private sector, and that <coughs> it's our, the role of senior management and even the board to make sure these are all being managed in a very balanced way. In my agenda would of course be spending more time with family, most especially with my grandchildren. I have five grand grandchildren and they're all here in the Philippines. Uh, their families have decided to settle here uh, and uh, they have, my son and daughter have jobs that they enjoy. Uh, hopefully they will find it enjoyable too within the family circle to stay here. They're, they're both married to Americans, so I have a very uh, fine experience interacting with my daughter and son-in-law, and I look forward to spending more time with them. But I will probably be engaged in some form of uh, advisory capacity for some government programs on a very limited basis. I may continue my membership in the board of uh, the Philippine Institute for Development Studies and maybe some level of private sector involvement in the uh, chemistry field. Uh, I need to revive my involvement in chemistry which has been minimized uh, as I took up my administrative roles here at IRI. Well, I just want to, to reiterate what I have said, that IRI is a great humanitarian organization and we should all, as Team IRI, strive to keep that reputation and its integrity intact. It is our moral duty as people who have been employed at IRI to make sure that this organization thrives according to its mandate and that we continue to have deep in our hearts the welfare of the very stakeholders we need to service and they are the rice farmers and of course the farming community and the poor people of the world. So that's all.